hear it? Welcome to Relay. Hello. Uh, is that... Okay, that's working for me. That's very quiet. gonna do like an intro where I like put this on my head. Oh wait, it probably thinks I've got the wrong light. That's why. One second. Ah, uh, the last week. Wait, why can't I go to settings? There's some weird logic there. Picks up helmet, mic. Oh, wrong there. mic. Done. Wrong helmet. Ha. Hello. Uh, hi. Um, I was going to. Uh, like, do an intro where I, like, put this on and was like, blah, I'm a stormtrooper, there's Bryce Serena and Desmarius and Shiver, ha 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 ha. But, um, I didn't have time to write anything because Streamlabs and Discord broke completely and, uh, I'm still trying to get them fixed again, but I have a mic, so that's, um... That's step so one. What you were aiming to do is what you missed, which you might say is in fact more stormtroopery than anything else. Yes. <laughs> that is true. Um, so, yeah, uh, we've got Bruce Serena and Desmarius and Shiver. Hello, everyone. Hello. Your audio okay. seemed to work. Uh, yeah, sorry, literally everything broke just before we were about to start. Um, I opened up Streamlabs OBS and was like, huh, it's not finding Discord anymore. What setting in which program was changed without my knowing to stop this? And somewhere in Discord, they had changed a setting in the last update, which broke everything. And I really, really wish they'd stop updating things. I didn't wait until the last minute. We started the call 30 minutes before, Rudy. So, shut up. <laughs> I can see why you like NVIDIA now if you don't like things being updated. Because that GeForce, um, the driver's section settings in there hasn't been updated since XP. I just like it when drivers work. I mean, I've never had an, M an AMD card that did. So, you know. As long as it goes down the highway, I'm happy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Nighthawk, people have been happy. Oh, that sucks because I really like Streamlabs OBS for the most part. Um, okay. That said, let's talk Star Citizen. That's what we're here to talk about, right? I'm, I don't, I'm weird today. This is a... I, <laughs> No, like, do you ever have that, like, you get to work and you sit down at your job and you're like, what do I do again? And I'm sitting here yeah, and I'm like... You're a pilot, aren't you? I, I'm, I just, I sat down <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what's Star Citizen? What am I, what's the, what's real, what do I do here? What is money? What is the meaning of life? What is is what is I your do quest? You want better? Why, Gamora? Wait. <laughs> so, uh, well, first, what's what's everybody drinking? Oh, good. Yes, thank you. That's a good way to start. Shiver, what are you I drinking? Guess. I had a coffee before the car, so I'll probably need the bathroom before this ends. <laughs> Des? Uh, finished off a Pepsi beforehand, and I'm drinking water now. People who are responsible. Bruce Serena? A local brewery. It's uh, Port City. It's a, it's from Alexandria, Virginia. It's nice. called Drecho Common. I'm having uh, 
<laughs> I just need to open it. I'm I'm drinking a shiver. <laughs> it's reversed, but is it? it is. I'm I'm having a pompous ass uh, English ale. Quite nice, actually. Um, a bit cheeky. Oh, yeah, a little bit. It's got a good um, nose on it. <laughs> what? Not touching that one. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just go to the... Oh, God. Why is this happening? Uh, oh, yeah. Because this was messed up, too. Did. You should have found somebody else. No. Someone else like, like me. Like that. Um... Oh my god, this is Yeah, I don't Jesus know. Jesus what... Christ, there was like some really nice little hints of stuff in calling all devs this week. Um uh, the one that immediately <laughs> springs to mind is during the customization thing, they they just nonchalantly said, uh, we'll be able to display numbers and names on the outside of your ship. And that's a that's a bit of a thing, you know. People have been wondering, will people see whether or not I've named my ship the USS Massive Penis in space or not? And it seems that, yes, they will see your massive penis in space. There's a fallacy in that somewhere. <laughs> I knew I cocked up somewhere along the line. There will be penalties. Sounds like a handful. Find that very hard to swallow. <laughs> oh, goodness. Did I shaft everyone? Sorry. I bow my head to the kings. Indeed. Round one to sure. We love you, Eris. We really do. I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, changing the exterior, as they say, is a lot easier because that's all one textured piece. So, you know, go, go from hop pink to silver whatever no problem but the inside they were a little coy about um probably because they don't even know if it's going to be possible yet but changing the textures on the inside of your ship to match you you know so you want a different floor to a different wall to a different ceiling they didn't really directly say so probably not but they did say say for example the constellation phoenix you've got a piano you can change the make a model of a piano or maybe you want to have a harp instead of a piano or something like that instead of a, an alcohol bar you can have a waffle bar for a true immer immer immersive experience so kind of like kind of like decorating a hanger that's kind of cool but not so yeah. much the wall-to-wall -wall shag carpet which is probably a good thing i don't know if that is a good thing to be honest <laughs> Disco ball, shag carpet. Well, I mean, a shag carpet. carpet is nice to look at for hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> this was a mistake. <laughs> oh my god, I'm Nor dumb. Nor insinuate the use of. <laughs> I'm just going to let you guys make puns all show and <laughs> no, I did find uh, it interesting that ghost um... ghost yes yeah no, I, I did find it interesting that um that they did say that you can only change the colors that are on the ships like you know the that uh, that ghastly purple Freelancer Durr, you'll only be able to change the colors that are that are highlighted. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, they they did also say that that's the the first stage. So the first stage is going to be changing a couple colors. We don't know what extent they'll get to. Like they might get us to being able to change more than just one thing. Um, but some of that's going to be. I mean, let's be honest, some of that's going to be how bad do players abuse it and how many pink and cyan aqua spaceships do we have that are also just 
dick written everywhere. Um, and how many of them are owned by testes? Yeah. So. Uh, I want to talk a little I bit. I love those guys. <laughs> they are. Uh, I, I. They're so baller. Oh, Rudy. Wait, shit. I forgot. One, uh, I owe Rudy a wave. Two, I owe um, apparently a number of waves due to last week's uh, uh, Nakara was streaming a SpaceX launch and apparently a whole bunch of, of people subscribed to that. So uh, while, while I do that, um, what do you guys think of the in-space mining that, that they were showing and like having to follow a rock that is essentially running away from you as you're trying to mine it? I think it adds a, 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 a subset of skill to it. Like, first off, you have to make sure that you're not giving enough power to the laser so it, it only breaks off very subtly instead of just explodes out. Um, and I also like how, like, I think th they've changed that depending on how far away you are from a rock, like, the mining laser isn't as powerful as up close so it just adds another layer and you've also got to worry about if you cock it up having to chase down specific little bits of rock to get your profit into your hole and keeping it on top yeah i really enjoyed that little section by dan truffin i really like seeing him every time he's on it's really interesting and uh he's pretty good at uh at speaking and uh that, that uh, the ATV this week I thought was just it's like I said before screen it's like ooh a piece of candy ooh another piece of candy ooh it's just like nice little tidbits it's just just about right you know it, it seems like to do. It, it does seem mm -hmm. like that's the way they've been moving with ATV in the let's just satisfy this person on this this person there's there's something that everyone can go ooh shiny rather than large deep dives into one specific thing. Um, now we know that that's because they're saving a lot for citizen con, but I think it's okay. Honestly, a slight reduction in the amount of. Do you think at some point post citizen con, uh, they'll go back to longer ATVs or do you think they're going to try and keep them to these shorter? Well, my question is, uh, from what I've seen as far as changes of RTV, especially with um, the last one, which was more along the lines of how to set something up, and then the one before that, which was about explaining uh, OCS, which the audio was, ugh, ugh. but there were extremely deep dives into very technical issues. And I'm wondering, kind of like, are they going to use the ATVs for shinies and the RTVs for the, the deep dives? I, that I would be really... That would be a nice little thing if they managed to do that, but I don't know what they're... Uh, I will say Sunjammer in chat is yelling at me just a little bit, and uh, I do know that he's been working on some some research, and uh, I think he and Nakara are working on getting that posted sometime soon, looking at exactly how uh, much of a reduction there's been, but uh, you might be able to see that, that soon on, on Relay, because, yeah. Nice. Just trying. I'm just trying to put a positive spin on things, Sunjammer. Uh, let me try and be positive. Let me try. <laughs> they did get pretty darn short and low there for a while. I think didn't they have like one or two that were like five minutes something? They had a couple yeah. that were like five minutes. But keep in mind, Not including the intro and the outros yeah. too. Keep in mind, uh, I would actually rather a five-minute one than the, like, hour and ten-minute ones we were getting for a bit. With nothing but fluff, yeah. Those were a bit long. Yeah. Let's be honest. They were and a bit it, long. And it's going to take them time, transition-wise, you know. And kind of the worst time to do this transition with everybody pumping toward CitizenCon they got to hold stuff back, so they're kind of limited what they can kind of show, which they would normally do, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but I still like the deep dives, though. I like I like seeing how they were able to come up with all the prototyping, how things work, how how they 
plan on improving like i think that information is gold and that should be like i hope that after sitcon they will they will go back to that but not as long not like 40 minutes maybe like 30 minutes i have a question for for all of you actually on that exact topic so they used to have 40, 50, 60 minute ATVs. They were a bit long, especially every week. And that was one of the things, one of the reasons CIG changed it was that is a lot of video content to produce every single week. Uh, they've, they've dropped it down to between five, 10 minutes ish, which is a lot more easy, easily consumed by us, a lot more easily produced by them. Here's my question though. Do you guys think maybe what we need, instead of all of that to be dumped in ATV, maybe ATV should be these little deep dives or these little tidbits, and then maybe we have a once a month deep dive into one subject, and that could be a longer show. Maybe we have once a month a 30, 45 minute show diving straight into just one topic gives them more time to to produce it. As an ATV or as an as no another as show? as another show a once a month deep dive show. Interesting. That I, I'm just wondering what your thoughts on that are because I think that might be because we we still want those deep some of the most inf- interesting information we've had recently has come from these really in depth deep dives and like multiple interviews with multiple devs and stuff and I mean yeah they they. Well haven't done it, it yet it, one of the things i'm most excited about one of the panels is uh, y'all commented on it over like either last week or the week before was uh tony zero oh, second yes. stage it's how like, is that second I'm stage down. i know right i was like do i really have to get up and move from chris over to tony i'll do it okay yeah uh, sure. i'm doing it i'm doing it <laughs> i I'm, I'm actually interested to like i kind of wonder if there's enough room at the second stage because I don't know about it. Actually, here, I've got a very good question to everyone in the chat. There's 40 ish of you. Um, is anyone going to be watching the first stage while Tony Zurevec is talking on the second stage? Anyone? Let's, let's, see, let's see what happens. So the first stage for Tony, let's see. Oh, Elise93 will be watching the first stage. Okay, Noxil, it's- maybe. Welcome to Lorville is is the is the prime stage, the art of Hurston. That'd be a good one. It, they're all good. They're all good. I can catch that like like on YouTube or something when I get back <laughs> home. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Tony's is always so deep, you know. It's like all the stages, ah. all the time. I love it. Oh. Yeah, I think you get a lot more information from Tony <laughs> than than you would from from the art of Lorville. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's a bad topic, but my money's on Tony giving us a lot of information. Let's be honest, my money is pretty much always on Tony. Um, let's watch this. They... Okay, so I'll be watching stage one then. If everyone else is watching stage two, no, no. someone's got to do it. Keep in <laughs> mind the week after, like. We at Relay are gone for the week. I don't know if there's going to be... I, I'm going to try and do a Relay station the Saturday I get back. I don't know what time I get back, so we'll see. But that week after, and possibly like the week and the second week after, I personally want to watch every single, um, every single VOD again on my own, and I want to want to do it with with all of you i'm gonna sit there and watch it and i hope you guys want to watch it too and we can talk about it because i can't see them all live right and i'm gonna go through one at a time and watch every single one because you know you brought up a good question while ago harris uh the the venue is gorgeous it's huge i think it's very appropriate we're all going to be comfortable it's awesome i don't know where the second stage is (laughs) the main stage I don't see how you could go wrong. But the second stage is like, where is that? And how big is it? And how big are the people going to be there? You know, that kind of thing. Um, I'm sure it'll be cool and fine, but because it's a big, it's a big center. 
Sunjammer Sunjammer asks, should they be doing streams at all for that reason? We pay money and we only get to see half of CitizenCon live. Well, one, we don't have to pay anymore, thankfully. They've gotten rid of that. Um, two, I don't know if they should be doing two stages. Personally, I think they should have had one stage only, and then the other stuff should have been in ATVs for the last, or, or a special videos done or something for the last several months. I don't know. I don't know if they should have two stages. I still personally think that they're biting off a little bit too much, especially when there's no game yet. That's straight to the point, to be honest with you, isn't it? Absolutely. Everything I was just thinking there. Well, and then you say that, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, shit, he's right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm in 100% agreement. Like, I, I like that they... They they're they're expanding sitcom so every so people who want to go can go, but I think it's too much to have two separate stages. And I mean, if you want to gobble up all the all the content, you're gonna have to do like a Twitch multicast or something, just to just to grab everything or pri prioritize what you want to watch. And yeah, okay. Uh, one, everyone remember to ask us some questions because we're going to get to those. Two, uh, huge thanks to Haramis for doing these videos as always. Three, what do you guys think about the FPS animations? Look good. Oh, man. The, um, oh, shucks. the FPS sharp turns and the... Uh the something else that that looked really polished and then i didn't actually see it too much it wasn't a good example but just knowing that they're working on those hit reactions both in and out of cover so much freaking detail you know yeah. and then adjusting search path logic so it doesn't look like okay we'll just wait for the guard to make the circle again we'll wait for the guard to make the circle again yeah. it's not going to be one of those things you know which I'll probably hate that it's not. <laughs> Why did but, they make this hard? Yeah. Yeah. But God, man, that's, that's, that's what we, that's what the whole point is, right? To push the envelope, the industry, the, what we all backed kind of thing to a certain degree. Now I do have a, a, a follow-up question. Uh, do you guys think that the openness of how they're displaying subsumption and how they want to do all the animations in the AI, do you think that's had an impact on, on the gaming industry in general? Because man, when I'm when I'm playing Spider-Man, love that game, um, and I go through like small little crevices, there's actually like procedural animation that makes it smooth and it's not like it's bespoke animation. I, I don't think that that's from Star Citizen, to be honest. Um, I think that like, Star Citizen isn't as much about doing anything new. It's about taking everything that's being done and putting it all in one. Um, it's doing some things that are new, but not as much as you might think. Uh, the the bespoke animations and stuff. I mean, I think I think back in what was that stupid EA? Was it EA? I think it was EA. Um, Dead Space. The animations in Dead Space as you were floating and like pushing things aside, like the the animations in Dead Space were phenomenal. Um, when it comes to uh, like character acting, L.A. Noir set the bar for that. They were the first to do the let's fully capture everything and now people are doing it but i don't i don't think that star citizen is really the genesis for anyone doing it what i think it is is i think you might start seeing maybe even smaller devs but a lot of devs who do probably watch what star citizen is doing simply because it's more open and easier to watch what they're doing than it is to watch i mean how much information does microsoft have on what some sony devs are doing right so do y'all sorry do y'all think that it's adding competitive pressure and making other developers step up their game just a little bit i mean obviously not at first they didn't even think it was serious but over time animations, animations are one of those things that have really progressed a lot over the years look, go and look at um the Mass Effect series for starters. You can see the improvements just in that one game over a series of years. Uh, look at 
Battlefield games, Battlefront, all of these games now have got a lot more intricate animations, a lot more smoother animations, and it's been very subtle uh, over the years. Um, but then um, you can play an older game, and you're like, well, why the fuck is my character just suddenly... Yeah. Where, where's my death animation? And you're like, I used to play games without that animation. Shit. <laughs> But they also used to not have people whose entire jobs it was to animate a coat. You are going to sit for five Wait, years. You, what were Macintosh for before then? <laughs> no. Um, okay, well, I've got one more, I think, to go to if I can get it to work. Uh, so, yeah, I, I did want to mention about the FPS... I really hope that these tighter FPS animations are sort of a sign that they're working on tightening all of the FPS because Star Marine is bad right now. Um, as someone that loves FPS and the majority of what I play are FPS. Star Marine needs fixes. Personally. Yep, yeah, I agree. It's needed some attention for a while, but they are putting a good bit in this this patch, aren't they? Well, mostly just the wreck stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know when we're gonna. They've they've made another team to focus on it. I just don't know when we're gonna see that. Well, they've got to get the obvious. I mean, it's not just as simple. And they they've said this themselves as, oh right, we need a team that's gonna concentrate on the arena commander aspect. It's not just as simple as you know. Right, there's your team. Oh, make everything. Uh oh. They need to. Hello. And what needs attention and in what order and all this sort of thing. Here's hoping for multi crew arena commander. Welcome back, Des. Well, I think that. Thanks. I, I mean, arena commander and star marine aren't the priority right now, so they're not getting mm. as much attention. Yeah. So I can see the pros and cons for both because, I mean, Star Marine and Arena Commander can be the one of the best way to get people to come into Star Citizen. Um, but I don't think they have enough people to to dedicate a team to those two things and keep it up to date and and in sync with the persistent universe. So it's like it's a catch twenty two. I, I know one of the ideas I've been hearing a lot in the community and one that I, I very much agree with and hope that they do is eventually when they're ready just making arena commander and star marine free to play i think that would be a phenomenal way to get people into the game mm -hmm. you can fly and you can shoot for free at any time and then if you want to go in and play the the actual single player experience or the the mmo then you have to buy it but here is this is what the gameplay is like um I want to also mention, you see uh, the video playing right now. This is RTV. Um, Shiver and I decided this week, actually, to not uh, try and do notes on RTV up on Relay, simply because uh, it is entirely visual. Um, I'm trying to translate <laughs> what they're saying as well as with these uh, similes they use, and you're like, I'm cross-eyed trying to explain how to translate that yeah. into summary language. Uh, and now he's using DataForge, and now he's moving something around. Yeah, so... DataForge does what they made it to do. It works well. <laughs> Gamers, coders are game coding. Yeah. So, uh... Just if you want to know more about RTV, just go watch RTV this week. Just go it was, watch it. It was if if it's if the game industry and how things are done is something you are specifically interested in. It's very interested. If if you just want uh, some shinies or some you know subtle drops of information, not so much for you this week. Yeah, like like Sunjammer says, Calix made a thing. End. I was really happy to see Calix. Yeah. He was always very informative. Yeah. And he just had a little bit of bad luck, a very complicated subject. 
I wasn't paying extremely close attention at first, just kind of skimming it. But then at the end, I want to say like the last five to 10 minutes, he had a bit of luck of it getting correcting what it was to get it to work. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah. And so it was a really good example, like they said, of how hard it is, you know, even with such a, a, a short confine and simple task of getting everything to work correctly. Yep. Which I'm sure no one has any empathy working with any kind of computing at all <laughs> i have i have just Thank started you, i've just started trying to learn to code i'm trying to make a video game of my own because i don't know why not uh fuck yeah it, it, it's a lot more complicated than you than you really think and like this rtv is a great example of of prototyping of getting the bare bone system down and seeing if it works or not. I am trying to make a hockey game. I've made a hockey puck. Uh, I've made a hockey puck so you can click and then let go and it'll go in the direction you let. That has taken me three days. True it's fact. good to have goals. Uh, it's, it's fun. Okay. Um, so that is uh, that. That was the the like summary of the video content and stuff this week. Uh, thanks, as always, to Haramis um, for those videos. I want to talk a little bit about one of the great tidbits from Calling All Devs, which was they don't think that they can do a fully fleshed out Earth right now, but they are working on getting all of the pieces together to do a fully fleshed out earth that's a heck of a task heck of a task mm -hmm. i mean if i if uh, well i've got a brain like a sieve but memory serves originally and for a long time it was only supposed to be certain landing zones like moscow london i think and new york shanghai new york. yeah exactly like four landing zones and that's all it's been for a long long time man if they take on the whole planet as much detail as that is my goodness it's it's going to take them a long time to get every detail almost i don't want to say pixel perfect perfect because it's like a quarter of the scale but to get the the, the major things it it's going to take a long time. That's why I think the soul system is going to be locked off. I'm going to be upset if they short my herd of cattle. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, what, beef with them. one of the things that I think is interesting <laughs> is they were talking this week about how I'm just going to completely ignore that and keep keep talking. Um, Don't have a cow over it. They were talking this week. A lot of steak. So I heard. Just grab the bull by the horns, Aris, and get on with it. Milk it for all it's worth. <sighs> oh, dairy, mate. Too cheesy. The blood is curdling <laughs> at the sound of this. Oh, that's great. These are way too good. We should butter him up. You think he's lactose intolerant? Are we done? Are we good? Have we have we hit them all? Are there any spots that you missed? Uh, I see what you did there. Thank you. I thought it was very moving myself, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this isn't generally my field of expertise. <sighs> okay, so well, I was saying something. What was I saying? So. Oh, right. Um, one of the things that they talked about also recently was how, like, they're, they're doing a lot of work on, on um, microtech and the, the snowy biome, right? But once that's done, they'll be able to make Canada with that biome. <laughs> right? I put a few buildings here and there. I mean, one or two igloos, but... <clears throat> That's what they're going to be able to... Once they've built all these planets that are more or less one thing, 
they'll be able to start saying, okay, well, let's just make the biomes of Earth, right? And they'll have most of the the shaders and the graphics and stuff already done. They can just... I can see it, though, that Play-Doh as it. opposed to all of Earth being accessible, just the landing zones being phenomenally huge. That could be a good way to get around the, the excessive detail that they would have mm. to... For a long time, yeah. And it's and it's kind of nice because it wasn't too long ago. It was several ATVs back where they or or, or maybe um, one of the other shows uh, where they showed the actual. It was kind of like a, a plot type format where they actually like, okay, this is going to have this biome, this is going to have that biome, that kind of thing, to where they can take a bit of Microtech and a pit, a, a bit of Daymar and a little bit of this and mix and match where they need it to differentiate between like equator, temperate, cold type areas. They're really smart the way they're doing it with all the tools and everything to assist them in the future and saving the information. Yeah. Very smart. Well, and, and that's one of the things that I find so interesting about Star Citizen's development is 90% of the development that they do and they talk about is, we got this tool done. This tool is done, right? And then it's like, what can they make with the tool? Anything. Very future-oriented. Yep. I like that forward-looking. Yeah. And- to, to, to expand upon that, like, how long did it take them to do Selen, Yella, and um, what's the other one? Um, the other moon uh, of Crusader. How long did it take them to do those three moons and, and Delamar? And now they basically... And how long did it take them to, to, to finish up the, the moons for... for, for Lorville or Hurston, like they have that tech now, and it's it. It took them a long time to to, to make it, but now that they have it, they've they're polishing the moons right now, which is what maybe six months worth of work, and that that time's just going to go sh- shorter and shorter and shorter as as more and more they use these tools and refine them and. And that tech's going to scale up, you know, it's, it's taken them months to make a, a full planet. Next time it's going to take them, you know, months to do two planets and so on until it's like basically, right, we need to be able to churn this system out. We can churn this whole system out, month, two months, everything done, bosh, but that's probably a long ways off. But that you're right, mm-hmm. and it, that is exactly what they're aiming for with these tools well, getting and- this core set up. And it's kind of interesting that we're talking about this because in the uh, the progress report this week, uh, Walla, one of the moons that's supposed to come in in 3.4, it's 86% complete. Mm-hmm. Like it moved from, I don't even know what it was originally, but it is so Sorry. much further ahead than they thought it was going to be. And I think part of that might be how... Up by fifty seven percent from last week. Yeah, like that's, a, that's this huge. Last time, the, the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. This last time, this last <clears throat> excuse me, this last update that I just saw seemed like you know just kind of cursory looking over it. In a lot of different areas, there was a lot of improvement, which was really nice to see. And yeah. uh, it's just like y'all were saying, it's uh, uh, exponential progression. It's just building upon itself. It seems like. Sorry, I'm having discussions about hockey pucks it, in chat. That's all right. Yeah, something else, uh, I don't know if we talked about it or if y'all chatted about it before, but something that blew me away on the ATV was that listening focus thing. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. Where you can pay attention to what you want to pay attention. It's like, or you miss that one part of the mission. It's like, what did they say? What did they say? And it's not subtitled or something of that nature. That's like, why I stopped I, title. I wish to goodness we had that in movies because there's so much competition between the action sounds and the dialogue, you know? So that was so wonderful. And I thought it was amazing. But it's going to be so useful, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's, like they say in, in the video, it, it's sort of realistic because when you are in these busy crowded areas, you focus on the person you're talking to and you, you, 
you can hear that over the general blare. Yeah. Usually. I mean, so not you... if you're me. I have no du hearing directional anymore. It's gone. Stupid music. Pardon? Exactly. Um, okay. We are almost up to question time. Uh, send us some questions. But that said, you may have noticed I'm trying to get as many different people on the podcast in the next couple weeks as possible. And there's a reason behind that. It's because CitizenCon is coming. And you've had my opinion and Shiver's opinion and thoughts on CitizenCon for the last year, basically. It's time to find out what uh, Bruce Serena and Desmarius think we're going to see at CitizenCon and, and how excited they are. So, Bruce Serena, let's start with you. I'm excited for CitizenCon. This will be the second time I go. I, w I went to the one in 2016 and out in L.A. Mm. Being there is wholly different than viewing it on stream especially since you don't have to pay for it <laughs> um jokes aside uh yeah like i'm just now beginning to to look over what i really want to do i'm definitely going to do the the tony zarabek i mean that's 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 given um what i'm expecting oh that's such a loaded question because there's not that much more they can they can show us. Um, besides, you know, a, a a a tech demo of them jumping to a new system. Really, there's uh, you don't think there's much else that that they could uh, just release with no warning. Well, I mean, there's Squadron Forty Two, but I don't th I think that's far off. I think I, I hope the road to to release at the end of the of the con is them discussing lightly discussing um, Star Citizen, but kind of going into Squadron Forty Two, and hopefully at the end they release that damn roadmap. Yes, Des, what do you think? Uh... Mine's kind of the reverse experience of, uh, of our eyes. Um, I've only watched it from on screen before, and it's kind of varied from CitizenCon to CitizenCon. I can remember one where it's like I watched all that CitizenCon had, uh, CIG had to produce, and there were a plethora, including y'all, uh, uh, all the streams that y'all did live. And, man, such wonderful coverage. It felt like I was actually there. It was wonderful, wonderful and wanted me to it wanted me good english really made me want to be with y'all that much more you know and experience it and and it, have the camaraderie and the fellowship with it um this year i'm really looking forward to that no doubt cig i'm there for the events the panels the little surprises which i definitely know there's going to be some um not to be coy <laughs> uh i just uh I do hope that there is something, a little tidbit about aliens would be nice. That would be really nice. Um, I definitely second uh, that part about releasing uh, a roadmap for Squadron 42 as far as closeness. That that would be just, I think, appropriate and really, really a, a nice uh, shot in the arm for the community. And then um, I think there's going to be a lot of little surprises that we don't know about obviously and because man this one i'm just the closer i get the more hyped i get of course but it just seems like uh every citizen con they've stepped up their game more and more and obviously with what happened with um the tickets the online tickets and the digital tickets yeah. that kind of came about from that but i really think there's a lot more that they haven't shared that they've really it's like oh look at this look at that what have you and i think some of us maybe not all of us because some of us are pretty tight including myself but some of us are gonna go oh i kind of feel bad because they did a lot this year you know they they usually pull out all the stops yeah no i'm uh, i'm with you on that uh I really do think that CIG do normally manage to pull out all the stops. I mean, aside from 2016, which... 
I hope there is a long 30 minute presentation about Spectrum. Oh. I. No. <laughs> so I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> But I understand why they did it because I mean they were they were going to they were going to try to do Squadron Forty Two vertical slice, and it didn't. Yeah, so they had to fill the time. Yeah, and but someone but... thought Spectrum was a good idea. Oh no! Well, they they could have done Spectrum well. All they had to say was, "Yeah, we're going to put this on uh, on phones right away, and you and your org can can chat on phones and." Done. But they didn't. And they haven't. Hashtag one, mobile. Mobile first. Do you think one of the uh, surprises might include a, a really wowing update of uh, VoIP or VoIP? Sorry. I think they will have that I mean, like, demo. It working with female characters. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see female characters. Uh, I want to try FOIP. I would love to be able to, to actually try it and then be able to report on it. Um, there's a lot of stuff I'm, I'm really hoping that we get to report on. Uh, we, we are making plans, uh, by the way. We are making plans for having lots of video and interview content no idea what we're going to get but i know we're going to be trying to talk to people and devs and orgs and uh i think we're like i i don't even know what's happening but we are going to try and have a lot of stuff but i would love to uh <laughs> that's true ghost that is true uh, but but no hey I, I ghost what you set up there, Citizen Con, Citizen Con is going to be delayed until the 11th, announced 10 minutes before when people are still in line. If they do that, uh, if they do that, I would be incredibly angry. Like, very angry. <laughs> you know, that's that's something you, you brought up that uh, I didn't really yet realize until I made out that uh, that timetable I shared with you, Eros. Yeah. Is registrations at 9 o'clock. It doesn't open till 11. It's like, holy cow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course, you know, we want to get there early for registration. We are what? going to spend two hours walking up and down a line interviewing people. <laughs> Literally. It's what we did. 95% of which will say, Relay who? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, used to be, we used to be DNN. Oh, I remember DNN. If, just use the DNN name first. Everyone knows the Desmarius <laughs> News Network. Really, Relay? Really, Relay? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Putting the Des in despair. <laughs> <laughs> let's, me dizzy, that's for sure. Let's, uh, let's, let's take some of these questions. Okay. Um, Idris Lover. There's your number one problem right there. <laughs> uh, is anyone miffed that the first capital ship in the PU is the Hammerhead and not the Idris? No, not at all. Uh, they want to save the Idris for Squadron 42. They've said for a long time that they weren't sure if they were going to be even putting the Idris in the PU until after Squadron 42 because they want the Idris to be a surprise. Uh, I think it's actually great that they've got the Hammerhead and that the Hammerhead is coming along better. And what's that, at Shiver? At this stage, though... Is the Idris a surprise to anyone? They, they've said, we've done it, we've shown it, here's the floor plan, we've put this over there, we've put that there, they've shown a lot of it. Is it really a surprise? And we have seen uh, a almost working version of it in-game so far. And they did once tout uh, Capture the Idris as upcoming game mode one day. I, I, I'm kind of, I, I also, you know, I love my big ships. 
and any excuse for more big ships in the game. Gotta love those big girls. Woo. But there is a big difference between showing you know, layouts and showing updates and all that, and actually that's that's actually playing a good the point. game. The, the hammerhead isn't the hammerhead isn't actually capital. It is just large, and I was just looking it up, and it does actually only have large components. So, I think the capital, the first capital ship, will be the eight ninety. Because I know they're they're white boxing or gray boxing that now, so. I don't know. We'll have to see what the first actual capital ship is. Just, just this, just this week uh, on a on a Captain Flint show, uh, he was showing people, you know, introducing new folks to to Star Citizen as as streamers often do, and one of the part that still still brought up goosebumps, even though it's been a long time, it's it time passes so quickly, is that whole uh, launch scene and the flight crew. And all the accurate details that they went through, all the checkups of every different crewman before the shooter sends off and gives the okay to the pilot to take off. It was just, uh, along with Pedro's music, of course. It's just, uh, just the the feels. <laughs> so the eight ninety has all capital components, um, power plant, cooler, shield generators are all capital. But then if you look at the Polaris, it's Power plant is capital, but its coolers and shield generators are just large. Well, I I don't what know what's a capital ship. I, I don't is know it the size or is it the component? If it goes at the start of the sentence, <laughs> <sighs> I, I suppose I I I, I set my else, set myself up for that one. Just a little bit, yeah. When Shiver's concerned, you always set yourself up for something. Disappointment. Dated girls like that. <laughs> uh, Agent one two one three seventy asks: Is the anniversary sale before or after CitizenCon? It's normally during. I believe. Anniversary? No. Oh, anniversary Wait. is Isn't it November. November seventeenth. Right. They they're gonna they, they have the the CitizenCon sale because there's a new ship released every CitizenCon and they normally bring stuff back. Then there's an anniversary sale and then there's the holiday, like the Christmas sale. Whew. So after, November but there is but there is still a sale. Yeah, it's after. But there is still a sale at CitizenCon generally, if I remember anybody, correctly. Anybody looking to pick anything up during those sales? Nope. Do you think the ship at CitizenCon is going to be the Kraken that everybody's prophesizing? I uh, don't care. I'm or not buying any more ships. Quit teasing me, Eris. At this, point, fair, man. At this point, I'm just doing it because Shiver keeps right. laughing. You, you do know that... That you will get inebriated and fall asleep at some point in the relay house. No, I won't. You're going to stay awake the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, this is Marius. I'm in the same house as Papa Dolvac. I'm going to be awake the whole time for my own <laughs> safety. I'm looking forward to meeting Papa. He's a oh, character. He is... He's Papa. Uh, Jack Avalon asks, don't know if this was talked about earlier, but what are your guesses and expectations for what we'll see at CitizenCon? I think you two kind of covered that. Wait, you two. So. Squadron. Roadmap. At least an update. At least an update. Yeah. Uh, Rudy Tootie Female Point and characters. Shoot. I don't know if we're going to see them. I mean, they exist, but we just can't. Speaking of which, play with them. <laughs> Sorry. Did, haven't they, on several occasions, teased us with um, surprise, possibly important cast member type of thing? I think they might have. I'm just sorry that I didn't bring that up earlier when the topic was addressed, but that's just uh oh shiver. Now it must be good with that kind of reaction. No, it's just him and his hair. 
<laughs> He's like a Canadian troll doll. It's wonderful. He was doing the Jutley a minute ago. It's true. That that would make that, a good good picture. Get him and Jutley together on the same photo. It enjoy it while it lasts. It's going. This is, you getting this, a haircut? I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. Oh, man. No. Don't do it. Got to split the trimmings with you 50-50, Des. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have pasties. Um, uh, so Rudy Tootie Point and Shooty asks, do you think we'll have the full scope of moons and planets by the end of the year like the roadmap suggests? Yes. I think we will. They're sure making good headway, that's for sure. Yeah. They're making excellent headway. I thought Art Corp was at the end of the year. And Microtech <laughs> was the last one. Oh. <laughs> someone yeah. stealing someone stealing Rudy's name. Rudy's <laughs> um, uh, That was last week. Oh no, it wasn't last week. Oh. Was oh. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah. That was that, that was, was this past that, Rudy stealing your yeah. shit, man. We're we're still that getting through. One sorry, step ahead. we're still getting through last week's uh, questions. Uh, actually, the last of last week's questions. Eris's other Vive Mike asks: Any thoughts on two other games, Cyberpunk and Rebel Galaxy Outlaw? Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, nah. Cyberpunk. Okay, but show me something actually real. I have absolutely zero faith that CD Projekt Red won't once again, because they do have historical, uh, they have done this historically, uh, tone it down. Uh, you can't believe anything that they say or show until it comes out. That, that, that just to clarify, that's graphically toned yep. down. Yeah, 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 graphically. But everyone's like, oh my God, the graphics. Hey, they have historically toned it down. Don't In get fairness, excited. Don't get excited but- yet. People aren't going, oh my god, just look at the graphics. I want this game because of the graphics. But that was for a console right? type thing, right? They dumbed it down for console. They did it for PC as well. They did it for both. That's the no, problem. No, I understand. They showed but... Witcher 3 at a, an E3 and it had all these amazing effects and particles going on. And then the release game didn't have that. Be, probably because it was also... And it could, it could have but... probably had it on PC, but they didn't differentiate. So I'm just trying to tell people to... Just like Star Citizen, I don't know if it's going to be a good game yet. You should probably wait until you can... Oh, wait, you can at least play some of it right now to find out if you like it. Wait and see. Well, don't don't pre... It's hope, I, I really hope it's good. But don't pre-order shit. Don't get too excited yet. Just wait and see. Cautious optimism, but not insanity. I'm going to show my ignorance because I haven't had a console since Pong back in the day. <laughs> but it seems like I've been seeing from the different sales at Newegg and Amazon and what have you been putting on that they have really upped the game as far as the consoles are concerned. And they can show 1080 now. They did. I think they... Uh, 1080, 1080. 30, yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, think, pro, I think the Pro well. PS4 can, can do 4K. Yeah, sorry. We're all talking. See, but I, I'm the exact opposite of of Eris here. Like, I'm super excited for Cyberpunk 2077, but I am tempering my expectation because you now, as being a follower of Star Citizen, things change. So, I hope it's as close to what they've shown, but I know that things will change. So. And they did do a really good job in that demo several times adamantly pointing out that this is a work in progress yep. and they are things yep. will possibly change. Yeah. I just I think people got a little too excited over it and I want expectations tempered. That's all. Uh Rudy Two D Point and Shooty this week asks, Do you think the first testing by Ivacati will be stable or the same old same old Hi Des? <laughs> same old, same old high pass. Yep. <laughs> word for word. That's Rudy Tootie. Uh... Um, 
but it's not capitalized like Rudy Tootie capitalizes it. So, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Rudy. Hi, Des. Better. <laughs> Uh, so I was writing something in chat. What was the last question? Uh, do you think that the first testing by Evil Cotty is going to be sta stable, or is it going to be, you know? Oh yeah, it's it's probably going to be buggy. Yeah, that's a whole point, though. It's going to be crashes and and, yeah. and all that. I mean, that yeah. it, it will be on fire. Yeah, par, mean, par for the course. Three weeks later, it won't be as on. Ghost, right. ghost. I may be a walnut. But I run a news organization, Four Star Citizen, years before the game's going to launch because it's possible and because there's news every single week. I'd love to run a news organization about other games that are years away from release. I would love if there was enough information about Mountain Blade Bannerlord that every week I could talk about it, but there isn't. I would love it if there was enough information about Cyberpunk if every year... I could talk about it, but there isn't. Shiver? <laughs> I thought this was your rage for the week. I was just wondering if they wanted to go to the pub for a pint. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, you know, not, nothing untoward. Look, look. I'm here because, like, five years ago, I wrote a story, and Nakara was like, hey, do you want to come and write more stories for me? Because I want to do news for Star Citizen, and it'd be cool if we had some stories, too. And I said, sure, naively, and now I'm sitting here running Relay. It's not my fault. I didn't ask for this. You guys are forced to... You guys get me. I'm sorry. It's okay, we forgive you. <laughs> uh, Sunjammer, I decided to write a book instead of short stories. The stories might come back soon. Uh, Elise asks, Do you think the capital ships, Idris, Javelin, Bengal, etc., should be released to the PU before Squadron 42, provided that they're ready? Yes, a billion times yes. Give me those massive penis ships in space. I want to run around them. I want to look at them. I want to draw on them. Give me the goddamn ships. This might be the only chance I ever get to actually play on one of those ships. Yes. Des? Uh, oh, sorry, Bryce, Serena, go first. Go. Go. Des? Uh, I'm not much of a capital ship type person, but... If they're still working things out, why not? Because the more that they can figure out what works, what's conflicting, that kind of thing, just from a mechanics point of view, it seem like it'd be a smart thing to do. It'll test out the, the server capabilities, you know, of how much it can graphically. Uh, this is where my, my terminology is going to fail me, but basically whether it's the, the client server or whether it's the um, net server, or whether it's the amount of graphics that it all has to render at the same time, proximities, the different instancing, to call it something. It's not really instancing, I don't think. But, yeah, it would really push it. What do you think, Bri? As someone who owns an address, I would much rather it be spoiled when I play Squadron 42 than having it released in the PU. Uh, I don't want it released in the PU simply to spoil Shivers wanting it to be released in the PU. <laughs> Ashley asks, uh, what is the craziest but still plausible prediction for CitizenCon? Squadron 42 released. This year, Chris Roberts will actually jump out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. No, Sunjammer, that's not plausible. We're, that we're, is funny, Sunjammer. We're, we're talking plausible. No, I think it's actually plausible, possible, probably not plausible, possible that they, like, release the first 
10, epi- 10, 10 missions of Squadron 42, and they're like, bam, done. Get off our backs. I don't think it'll happen, but... This is coming from someone who thought 3.0 would be on 2016. It was. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Root, you're a horrible human being. Rudy uh, Ashley <laughs> asks uh, jump jump point traversal for citizen con uh, it, it, that would be nice wouldn't it they've they've had um, the prototype and they they say we have an idea of it feeling completely different a more organic feeling because they want you to feel like you're uh, in an organic being almost like in, inside of a blood vessel and stuff so they might need to to get the flight mechanics to a more polished point before they look at that, but they could show a video showing their concept for it. It would be cool to see, but... It'd be nice to get another visualization of it, yeah. Mm. They did do a previs like, a handful of years ago. 2016, I think, wasn't it? Because they had nothing else to show. No, it was it was before that. It was when was it, it was at South at South by Southwest and like Tony Zorovic. Oh was, yeah, back was when stopped. they went to other things. Yeah, back when they still good. did shows. Yeah. Um, that was the last event that I uh, that was the only CIG event I ever really attended. And man, the difference between that and this Citizen Con is going to be just like <laughs> huge. Yeah, huge, huge. Uh, Ashley also asks ship prediction, manufacturer and role, please. What for sitcom? Yeah. I'm I'm going for either the the Kraken or the Corsair. Like I mean, judging by from from the past, um, we had the what was it the was it the Vulture? And well, when they had that that poll back in December, they they asked the community, "What type of ship would you like? Would you like a a, a pocket carrier, a salvage, a a Drake ship that's similar to the Connie and uh, the Starlifter?" Well, we have the Vulture, we have the Starlifter, so those those are the two that that I think. Shiver, what do you think? I think you may see something big from Drake. Does Marius? No comment. NDA. Oh, bollocks. That's a much better answer than mine. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to get the only ship type that CIG are still missing. It's going to be from a new manufacturer. It's going to be a food truck. <laughs> oh, good. It has to be the fifth element food truck. Yeah, that, that, exactly oh, that. that. I, want, I awesome. want a ramen food truck. That's... Runs on pedal power. Yep. In space. <laughs> um, Ashley also asks, can you talk to some producers, please? We are going to do absolutely everything in our power to do so but I cannot make any promises. Um, I might have some stuff to talk with patrons about soon at our next patron meeting for, and then, and then maybe I can talk about some stuff on here too, Uh, but I can't yet. So yeah. Uh, Fenrir 84 asks, not expecting the interest in game until squadron 42 release, but what about Derelict Did Dry out in the verse? Since we have the Javelin, it's broken up and all mangled, so why not? I'd like more Derelict ships out in the verse, just mm. everywhere, just scattered, and, and like you can't get through them because there's so many. Well, especially when you get toward Vanduul space or where the old Tavarn Wars, the uh, one and two were fought, you know, the big conflicts. There should be plenty and lots of debris. I mean, isn't the whole system that Squadron 42 is supposed to be in was the first 
um, Vanduul conflict. That's why there's a bunch of ships or debris around the planet. There's there is one. Oh, can't I can't remember the name of the planet. There's one like planet Gideon or something. There's one planet that I'm still waiting for. It's the planet I am the most excited for. A I think it's a Bengal crashed on the planet's surface and it's still like like vertical on the planet. That Oh the showed in the three hundred commercial. That is my. I, I am most excited for that planet. The yeah, it's supposed to be like an outpost, or it's supposed to be like like uh, a, it's a, a bandit. Yeah, like yeah. City in a crashed Bengal. I yes, that is what I want. I don't care about any. I want that. I'm gonna go there and start reclaiming it piece by piece. <laughs> um, Ashley asks. Uh, what would happen if you and your militia ran into a UEE fleet in Vanduul space? Would they be neutral or helpful? Probably helpful, to be honest. Um, Speaking yeah. of which, did you read the, uh, the the nice lore tidbit about the, the Bremen militia? I did not. Oh, it's it's some pretty good lore. I think it had already been, it had been released. Uh, the uh, excuse me, the Bremen Defense Force. It had been released. Uh, I think before at a jump point, it had said, but um, basically, in summation, uh, it was an entity that came about from need because they were a backwater, and at the time there was a Vanduul threat as well as the Xion threat, and there was the Devoran Wars that went on. There was a lot of different things going on at the same time. It was during the Messer era, and it kind of came about. And they were very careful to stay neutral as far as the Messers were concerned. So they survived, and they flourished, and they got, like, corporate backing. It was really, really cool. And then they've actually become, like, outside of serving in the UE Navy, it's, like, one of the pres most prestigious. They have an excellent reputation um, uh, within the galaxy or within the verse of being a really upstanding, good militia. It was it was some good reading. Yeah, I need to catch um, up on the lore. Last last time I read the roar was lore was back in twenty fifteen. So, is there any place that I could like catch up on it? Lawmakers oh. guides of the galaxy on YouTube. <laughs> I don't uh, think we cover the lore anymore. No. Yeah. The the lore got. There's a lot of it, and yeah, we covered yeah. it. Yeah. We covered it for a while, but then it's now been like seven years of steady lore, and uh, yeah, and it's in a lot of different places. It's a lot to coalesce. Yeah, it's. I mean, they they I'm, have CIG have people that they've hired specifically to be archivists for the lore. Uh, we don't have that budget. <laughs> Here's a thought and a question. We haven't heard anything about it in quite a while. Do you think we would hear anything about the Galactopedia? I know it's awful early. Man, I, I would so. really love to take a peek at that. For sure. Yeah. yeah just, that, that, just for being able to actually find something I'm looking for <laughs> as far as lore or yeah. details, you know? Be oh, awesome. Be so great. Okay, where are we? Haramis asks... Eris, did you buy a Star Runner? I did not. To meet you. Did you get one, Brad? I did. Nice. I, I'm a I'm a collector. I got, I gotta buy them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's it's, it's so bad. That's that. terrible. There's so many. But my um, justification is I'm, I'm giving people a job, so. Uh, Ghost, Ghost has a good, uh, good point. Um, and QPAN as well. For anyone that does want sort of uh, dives into some of the lore of Star Citizen, um, our 
our good friend, uh, the Astro Pub, uh, whose show is two hours after ours. It starts, well, two hours and 15 minutes over at uh, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. I think I can do this. Yeah, it's in there, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. Uh, he does a YouTube series uh, called Galactic Historian, where he uh, he does lore. So does he like collate the lore and, and present yeah. it so it's like nice and concise and understandable? Yeah. So uh, yeah. if if you're looking cool. for some more stuff, check that out. That's where I'm going to go after the show. Good. You should. Everyone should. You should all do it. Do it now. Uh, Jiro asks, uh, what do you consider the definition of a capital ship? Is it size, crew, uh, mechanics? What do you think? Uh, let's start with Bree Serena and go around. I think it's a combination of, of size and, and components. Crew, not so much since they already have, like, you can have a skeleton crew and then you can have, like, the full on 100 people crew for a, what was that, a, a Bangle or an Idris? Idris is like, man, I don't even remember what they brought it up to after, uh, man, uh, the UK got their after hands it got on big. it. After big. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've heard what they brought it up to, but I thought it was like, yeah, 70, 72, 60 or 70 was what I was thinking, but... It's 12 skeleton and then, like, 72 for, like, if you want to That's, fill every position. Ridiculous. Is it do you, do you need fewer skeletons because you don't need to feed them? Oh, my God. No, they're just sitting there like this. That's only if you have a bare bones budget. The problem is you'd have to call each and every single one of them bones. 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 Clearly, I'm not a doctor. Um, the piano would be pointless as well. Because they've got no body to dance with. <laughs> and Shiver uh, broke the stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I personally, I've been going with what I assumed was CIG's definition of a capital ship, which was... The component size, if they use capital components, they are capital ships. But then there is the question of if it only uses one capital component, is it still a capital ship? I don't know. Uh, I don't, like, does an Endeavor count as a capital ship? It's not military at all. It's, 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 a, it's a hospital. Does it count as a capital ship? I don't know. I think that's a an interesting question. I, I think well, I mean, the size, uh, the mechanics, uh, the role, the potential the firepower, or the potential to fulfill its role makes the function. it into a cap. Yeah, yeah it it, plays a huge part. I mean, whether it's the Endeavor or, say, the, what is it, the whole E that's just ginormous, you know? Mm. But if the Endeavor separates and it's just the front half of it, oh. is is that still a capital ship? In real life, when you look at a fucking ginormous oil tanker, do you say that's a capital ship? I mean, it's no. I th I say that a, thing's a fucking gigantic a oil ship, tanker. I think that's a capital ship, though, because you have to. A capital ship doesn't necessarily imply military. Mm -hmm. I think capital ship implies size, and. Well, I mean, if we're going nautical, just pretty much size. I, I think my question is, and Cupan's well, saying it's, it it's capital due to its components. But it could be tonnage, too. What if you've got a smaller ship, something the size of, like, the Hammerhead, that has all large size components except for its shield generator, which is capital? Is it a capital ship? It's a shield ship. It's shields are capital size. It's shield generator is capital size. Or go ahead, Des. I don't think so. I think that's just more of a we're talking about a characteristics of a ship and, and components kind of give you an idea and add flavor, but they in of themselves are possibly not the the dictation of what makes a capital ship. So what becomes I, I this it's a really interesting question, one that maybe uh, we should ask be, CIG mm -hmm. at uh, CitizenCon. 
Agreed. We should, we should... It could be just in that area where it's it's neither a a, a yacht size ship or and it's not a capital ship. It's it's CIG could also size. <laughs> CIG could also come like and say it. and be like, no, it's uh, yeah, so I mean, capital ship is the military designation for military sized capital ships. The other ones, I mean, the Endeavor is just a ship. It's just a really big ship. It doesn't have a capital designation. Right. The designation of a capital ship could be military specific. I don't know. We don't know. We'll have to ask. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lorhor asks uh do you think you can get an interview with sherry heiberg i oh my god it's fast cop they did. <laughs> uh i literally have no idea who or if we'll get interviews with people uh i'm still working on that what i will say is we hope to get interviews with everyone uh if it were possible i would get an interview with every single uh cig dev while we're down there, all 500 of them. So we'll see what we get. I can't even make any promise. Uh, the only thing I can promise is that I will interview some random people that aren't devs. They're just fans. And I'll probably interview might not like... Even be backers. They might not. I'm just going to walk up to people in Austin and be like, hey, you heard of Star Citizen? I like your hat. How's, how's Austin City Lights going? And then I'm going to be dead. No, you're not. Well, yeah, I'm going to have a heart attack after all the barbecue. Nah, we'll keep you alive. I don't know. I'm looking at that schedule that you've made. There is a <laughs> lot of food and a lot of alcohol. That's okay. We'll, we'll just hook up an IV to you. you know. might, might need that. Uh, hey, it, force feed you. Ashley asks, what would you need in a fleet to be completely self-sufficient? Fuel, cargo for food, uh, and some really big ships with guns, and maybe a couple of smaller ships to go between the big ships, and uh, some crew. What are you going to do if you need ammo? Cargo ship. You've got a hull C filled with food and ammo. But that's not self-sufficient. It depends on how self-sufficient, doesn't it? We, if there are factory ships and you can literally create your own ammo on the fly? Well, no, I don't think you're going to get a ship that can just fly around making ammo. I think you might get a station that Why can not? do it. But the station wouldn't be mobile. It makes sense, does it not? No, it doesn't. Have a ship it does a not. virtual factory ship you keep on the back lines uh, during an all-out skirmish. And it, if you get that fucking thing, that's going to be a huge explosion. That could be quite an interesting role. Yeah, but what's what's better for your your um, people? A ship that has to constantly make stuff and is a huge target, or a bunch of hull Bs and Cs that just run back to the nearest system, buy it, and bring it back to you. Logistics really? is not easy. Batman. Just ask Mister Zuravec. <laughs> True. But you're not in favor of a factory ship in general, then? Uh, no. No, I don't want to turn this into Factoria. What? what? Why not? Because I don't like Factorio. I thought you did. No, no, it was terrible. It was fun for a little bit. It was fun for a little bit. And then I have friends that took it too far. So I was like, oh, I can make one of these and I'll make one of these. And, and then I hop into my friend's game and it's like, can I? No, we've got like 14 million factories doing this and this and everything. And it's just everything is automated. And I was like, well, uh, I've got a stick. I can't do anything. There's literally nothing for me to do. Oh, but can, can I like take some of the ammo to the. No, it's all auto fed. Everything is automatic. Everything is done already. And I was like, well, I'm going to go play another game. <laughs> hey when that happens yeah uh i don't think we have any more questions shiver can you uh take over for two seconds oh, yeah yeah <laughs> so how how do i take over with no questions when i'm just as desperate for the toilet as he is 
bastard. <laughs> is today National Batman Day, by the way? That's what I heard. Is then, it? Is anyone checking? This is complete aside from Star Citizen. Bollocks to you all. I'm sorry. But the Warner Brothers have started their own uh, DC stream. Yes, I know. It's got like six programs on it. But there is an entire subscription-based service for DC now. So, uh, kind of on that note, Shiv, what is all the rumble I've been hearing about Superman and wasn't it Henry Cavill? And... Oh, Hen <clears throat> what? They have, uh, Warner Brothers have said they're not going to renew Henry Cavill's contract as Superman and Henry Cavill put out on Instagram some really weird response where he didn't say anything and just had some music playing and put a Superman doll up. Hmm. Interesting. Question. I... Do you guys want the ATV to go back to the same length after 3.3? Thank you, Superbird. <laughs> I I think you know, a combination of the two. I think they should keep it simple, concise, but extend the time just a little bit. I mean, I mean, I know I mean, my theory is why they 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 shorten down the time not only for CitizenCon, but because other other community members have been digesting the information they give and, and I think they get more views than what the CIG does. I but I, I mean Yeah, I do think that CIG have been uh, Yeah. So that's why I think keep it concise keep the information as as detailed but quick as possible but also extend it out just just a hair you know, maybe 15 20 minutes uh sunjammer do we have any figures on that sunjammer has some figures on that i think um He's been kind of sensitive to the amount of time that they, that they produce things. So and, he and, would know. And rightly so. I mean, I I soft my subscription recently, largely because I couldn't afford it, but also because what is the money going to? We don't we don't hear from Chris anymore. And and there's something that I've noticed is like every once in a while we'll hear like Chris is on ATV this week, and part of you wants to be really excited because Chris is on ATV, but he's not really, is he? He's there to do like the intro thing and say, "Hey, this is what we did this week," and that's it. Yeah, he's there's, an anchor on a news uh, on a news. It, it's not it's not Chris sitting there and talking to us. We don't get that anymore. Um, He's reading, not talking. Yeah, exactly. and and I miss the Chris just talking to us about the game, and I'm I. He's so personable anyway. Yeah, uh, but I can understand why. On. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. No, no, but sorry. I I understand why that they they don't do that anymore is because they've been burned in the past several times when Chris lack of a better term, ran his mouth about some stuff and stuff gets changed and then the community goes to have yeah. goes to shit because they can't they can't handle change. So that's why they don't prototype stuff for us anymore. I mean the I whole know. golf ball swing uh tobacco, the freelancer um struts tobacco way not, not the not just the the people argued about the cutlass for so long without shutting up ever that they literally said fuck it fine we will change the cutlass from what it was supposed to be to the bullshit ship that y'all want okay because we we suck we really suck um and i really like what they used to do and i liked how chris would just talk and he'd, he'd come up with all these ridiculous ideas and that was fun it was great to to have an idea into his mind it's it's i i someone's gonna yell at me for this but it's kind of like listening to elon musk talk he just spews ideas and it's it's really really interesting 
and we don't get it anymore because someone comes along and says, he said this, when's it happening? Why hasn't it happened? He lied to us, the game is a fraud and I want a refund. Like, shut up, go away, grow up. I, uh, take off, you hoser. Eh? Exactly. Bloody take off. I'll go drink a 2 4. Fucking Why losers. is your Canadian accent Scottish? Because I'm really bad at accents, sure. <laughs> but you are Canadian. Doesn't matter. I don't have an accent. As a Canadian, I don't have an accent. <laughs> Everyone else has an accent. I don't say A. Eh. Do I don't say, say a boot. What? Well, I mean, how do you say beige? Beige. Brass. Brass. <laughs> brass. No, brass. It's brass. Oh, so you say brass. Brass. I see. So there's your accent. No. You... I say brass. It's brass. How? Uh, brass shiver. Sure. Shiver. How do you say aluminium? I don't That's aluminium. 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 Yeah, I say aluminium. Aluminium. <laughs> it's aluminium. Aluminium. Well. Though at Both the same time, the how do you how do you it should actually be aluminum? Technically, it, it is it aluminum be because the guy who discovered it was uh, named it aluminum. But it's aluminum. The British at the time, being the fucking pompous it's all British, fucking British. Know where that God. Came from, decided no, you can't have that. It has to be an eum. Yeah. But Superbird, I would one hundred percent welcome Minnesota into Canada. One hundred percent. I'd welcome all of the United States into Canada. All of it? Well, we don't like the color orange. <laughs> so you're leaving out the Dutch? They've got I it pretty good over there already, okay? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> well, that's... Grass is always greener. Sorry, let me put it in your... The grass is always greener in your area. Grass. <laughs> I just mean the the the, the grass. Shiva's talking about the grass. The grass well, is hell. greener. He's taking the piss out of my accent. Whatever am I gonna do? With a, with a sudden change in the laws up there, will that cause a, the incidence of cannibalism to increase? No, just cannibalism. Cannibalism. Okay. So clearly, we've run out of shit to talk about when it comes to Star <laughs> Citizen. So uh, that's going to be it for us for this week. It went all up in smoke. <laughs> yeah, the grass is green on the other side. Oh, God. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, off the grass, man. Come on, we'll grow on you. Uh, Bluesy, we already have Texas and Canada. It's called Alberta. We deal with them fine. So, two hours from now, uh, check out the Astro Pub, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. Uh, Tuesday, the question mark, question mark, Tuesday, the, the 18th, we are going to have a science show. Relay Space is going to be on. We're talking about, crap, what are we talking about? Uh, no, we are, no, no, we're talking about the ISS, life on the ISS, and the uh, difficulties surviving in low Earth orbit. Um, so join in for that. We're actually going to have two in a row, the 18th and then the 25th. We're also going to have another relay space because we missed last week. Sorry about that. Um, at the same time, tune in next week to the relay station. We got your <laughs> news and your vague political commentary. Um, and yes. And shaggy rugs. And I will have had a haircut. Uh, Bree Serena, Desmarius, thank you both for being on. Thank you for having me, sir. Pleasure. Shiver, uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah. As thank always. Thank you for having me. <laughs> hey. You're just as stuck here every week as I am. You don't get a it's choice. More a disappointment to the people watching this than anything. <laughs> uh, everyone out there in Chatland, uh, thanks for watching. 
uh, we'll see you in the verse. And I can't wait to see as many of you as possible at Citizens Con. Have a great weekend. <laughs>